the intraocular fluid. So I've told you that inside the eye, so we have the aqueous and the vitreous humor, which should contain the fluid part of the eye with the vitreous humor, which is more gel-like, mas viscous siya. Vitreous, letter V, viscous. So mas viscous part, gel-like, okay? So the normal intraocular pressure would, of course, maintain the circular, globular shape of the eye. Otherwise, hindi na siya magiging globular, hindi na siya magiging below. It is made possible because of the pressure or the force exerted by the fluid towards the wall of the eye. So, okay? And those intraocular fluid, okay, they are being produced by the ciliary processes. Okay, ciliary processes, okay? And if you can see here, of course, if you produce those fluids, those fluids should also be drained out, okay? So they will be drained out through the canal of SLEM, okay? So this is kind of notorious. So sometimes if you have buildup of proteins, buildup of debris, bacteria, eye infection, etc., because the intraocular fluid, okay, is also part of what we call the reticuloendothelial system. So they also have macrophages that can help to fight against those bacterial infections or any infections inside the eye. So if there will be bacterial debris or immoproteinaceous substances, they can block the canal of SLEM. If you have a blockhead in the outflow of your intraocular fluid, then you'll have an increase in intraocular pressure. And a pathologically increased intraocular pressure would lead to a disease called your glaucoma. Okay. See? So the canal of SLEM, okay? So this is where you drain out your intraocular fluid. So what is a normal intraocular pressure? It is at a range of 12 to 20 millimeter mercury using a tonometer. This is a machine to determine the intraocular pressure, okay? Anything <clears throat> higher than your 20 millimeter mercury would have an increased pressure, which can lead to glaucoma. So what is one danger if you have such high pressure? It can impinge, okay, on the blood flow to the eye. So it can lead to increasing pressure. It can eventually lead to blindness if not treated. Okay. Let's talk about the second part of the physiology of vision, the neural retina. The retina is made up of the different layers. You have the pigmented layer, outer plexiform, outer nuclear. You don't have to memorize it. I just want you to know that you have so many layers of the retina, okay? And later on, we'll be talking about the different cells and which of the cells that you have to know the functions now. For example, the horizontal cell. What is the main function of the horizontal cell? Later, we will understand. Para saan ba yung mga ganglion cells? What are the different ganglion cells that you have? What are the rods? What are the cones? So we'll talk about them. So let's talk about the photoreceptors, okay? So in the retina, you can find the photoreceptors. So when I will ask you, what would be the receptors for vision? That would be your photoreceptors, namely your cones and the rods. So you have the rods and the cones. They're the photoreceptors. And the area with the highest visual acuity would be the fovea, particularly the center part of the fovea called fovea centralis. The fovea centralis is the area in the retina with the highest visual acuity. Okay? So these are the photoreceptors made up of millions or thousands of millions of discs. And these discs will contain the rods and cone, the photoreceptors per se. And let's try to magnify, no? So when you look at the photoreceptors, it's... Uh, so when you look at the photoreceptors itself, here you will contain you my different chemical substances, which we'll be discussing later. You my rhodopsin, okay? You my uh, photoreceptors receptors, my color pigments, okay? We'll talk about them later. What does this picture imply? How do you, how come uh, the visual acuity in the central fovea is the highest? Bakit kaya? Remember, I've told you earlier that the different layers of the retina, okay? So if the light will pass through all the layers of the retina to reach the 
pigment epithelium to reach the terminal part or to the ganglion, okay? Ang dami na tatahakin, ang dami na mga hindrances. So, in the fovea centralis, in order to make the visual acuity very, very good, all the different layers, okay, yung mga blood vessels, yung mga amacrine cells, horizontal cells, they are pushed to one side. So, in the fovea centralis, mas manipis siya, no? mas manipis siya as compared to the other part of the retina. So if it is thinner, mas konti yung mga obstacles that the light source has to pass through. So the area would, of course, be of a higher visual acuity. Okay? So let's talk about the pigment layer, which is this one. The pigment layer of the eye would contain the pigment, of course, called your melanin. Melanin or the pigment layer would serve as the um, alam mo yung part of the camera, okay? The bellows of the camera. Yung man, sina unang camera. Diba? You have this big camera. Tapos dito sa gilid, parang accordion type na naka-cover. So it prevents too much light from entering into the film. Kasi you will expose the film. So it has to be dark. So inside the camera that you have, yung dark part, dun sa kung saan mo nilagay film, but you have to protect it from light. So it's like the bellows of the camera, yung pigment layer. Because the pigment layer contains your melanin. Some patients are born without melanin. They are the, your albinos. So they cannot afford to stand in broad daylight because once pumasok yung light, it would bleach out the entire picture. They will have extreme glare. Why? Because they do not have the pigment layer to absorb the excess light. So if light will enter the eye, all of the rods and cones would be stimulated simultaneously. You will end up with a very, very bleached, blurred vision. So pangya. And of course, they do not have the melanin to absorb the UV rays. So it's very harmful for those albinos to be exposed in broad daylight without wearing your eye protection. We'll talk about the importance of vitamin A. We have learned in our elementary days or in our younger days that vitamin A will prevent night blindness. Vitamin A would give us a better vision, but why? After this lecture, you should be able to understand. Back it. The blood flow to the retina actually is from two sources. We have the central retinal artery and the choroid. The choroid would give... Um, circulation or blood flow through the diffusion, okay? So if you have a trauma, okay? So nabagok yung ulo mo, concussion or whatever. If you tear the artery, if you have a retinal detachment, you will not have permanent blindness yet. But if this is not repaired after around three to four days, you can have permanent damage because or blindness because your choroid can only serve as a temporary blood supply to the retina. Hindi siya yung permanent. The permanent would still be the central retinal artery, but you can get those nourishments, blood flow from the choroid because of diffusion. Okay? Now, let's talk about the rhodopsin retinal visual cycle. Of course, what is a stimulus for vision? Siyempre kapag vision, pag sabing receptors, photoreceptors, or rods and cones. So what is the stimulus? Light. Light. Very good. Light. Okay. In the presence of light energy. Okay. Let's talk about this is for your black and white vision. Black and white. Okay. Because your black and white vision, for example, if there's a light energy, okay, the rhodopsin, okay, would be broken down, okay, into the final product, your retinal and your scotopsin. Why? Because rhodopsin is called your visual purple. Rhodopsin is a chemical used for your dark vision or your black and white vision. Okay? Because what would be the chemical for your color vision would be your color pigments or the cone pigments. Remember that. For color vision, it is your cone pigments and the or the color pigments. Cone or color pigments. But black and white vision, it is your rhodopsin. And rhodopsin is also known as your visual purple. Okay? Clear? So in the presence of light, it will be broken down into your buffer rhodopsin, into your lumiere rhodopsin, meta rhodopsin 1, and your meta rhodopsin 2. And it is a meta rhodopsin 2, is activated rhodopsin. 
the activated rod of sin would now have an effect, okay? So it will have the breaking down, okay, of the retinal and the scotopsin. And the all trans retinal, okay, through the enzyme isomerase would become your retinal. Eventually, this retinal would be uh, recycled into your rhodopsin. Because sabi ko, your rhodopsin mo is made up of your scotopsin and your retinal. So after the whole cycle, okay, so this scotopsin and retinal should be recycled. They have to fuse to become your rhodopsin again. And this is through the enzyme retinal isomerase. But in the presence of vitamin A, your vitamin A would give you a back and forth, no? Because enough supply of your vitamin A would give you non-stop supply of your retinol. Because your all trans retinol can become your all trans retinol, which is a form of your vitamin A. And your vitamin A is now very crucial for your night blindness, for the prevention of night blindness. Why? If you do not have vitamin A, if you are already depleted of the enzymes of these substrates, you cannot have continuous na dark adaptation. So if you go into the movie house, na madilim, you cannot have continuous night adaptation. Your rods cannot continuously undergo night adaptation. So you will have blurred vision in the dark. You'll have blurred vision while inside the movie house. Blurred vision mo inside those, uh, syempre wala na ngayon, yung mga asylum, yung mga ganyan, no? But in the presence of vitamin A, no? In the presence of a very dark environment, di ba, kapag pumunta ka sa mga camping, if you want to see the stars, you have to go into a very, very dark place, yung mga mountainous places, for you to appreciate the stars. So it is because of this chemical steps. But because of an enough supply of vitamin A, continuously nag-a-adapt nang nag-a-adapt nang nag-a-adapt yung ating rods. It's because of the vitamin A. So some patients, if they cannot adapt because of a depletion of vitamin A, within one hour of an intravenous infusion, saksakan ka lang ng vitamin A, within an hour, you can reverse this one. But how come this does not happen so often? Because we have enough supply of vitamin A in the liver. So if we have a depletion in the vitamin A in the eye, the vitamin A uh, storage in the liver can sufficiently supply. Okay, So if you have a chronic deficiency of vitamin A, malnourished the children, okay, chronic deplet depletion, then you will have night blindness. Okay. Now let's talk about excitation of the rods. Kasi sabi ko kanina, you excite the rods, you break down the rhodopsin, and all this chemical process will happen. But let's try to talk about the excitation. Of course, excitation of the rods, the rods are photoreceptors. The receptors can undergo action potential. Clear? Because you've learned in the cell, muscle, nerve, that they can all undergo action potential. Same is true with the photoreceptors. They also undergo action potential. But this is the only difference. Action potential in all the different types of cells, like the muscle cells, will make the charge inside the cell to be more positive or more negative. Holgado, ano? Nakita ko siyang sumasagot, pero nakamute kasi mic niya. So if there's an action potential, there's depolarization, you make the charge inside the cell more blank. Positive or negative? Positive. Very good. You make the charge inside the cell more positive. This is a depolarizing change. But kakaiba itong si rods and cones. If there's an action potential, hindi siya mag-undergo na depolarization. But instead, it would undergo hyperpolarizing change. This is a hyperpolarizing potential. What do I mean by hyperpolarizing change? You make the charge to be more negative or less negative? More negative, good. Because the resting membrane potential of the rods and cones would be minus 40. A minus 40 in the resting membrane potential is much, much, much less negative than the resting membrane potential of your skeletal muscle. Skeletal muscle minus 90. Nerve cells, minus 70. 
SA node minus 55, if you can still remember. But the rods and cones minus 40, much, much, much less negative. But if there's an actual potential, it becomes minus 70 to minus 80 millivolts. So tama kayo. It becomes more negative. Why? This is the reason why. So after this lecture, you should be able to explain. Bakit thinking more negative? E action potential nga siya. This is it. This is the outer segment of the <coughs> photoreceptors. So ito outer segment, nilakihan lang niya dito. Yan. Clear? So the outer segment, the inner segment. The inner segment, normal. Tingnan mo. The inner segment also has a sodium potassium pump. Three sodium out, two potassium in. And the potassium, okay, inside the cell, okay, lumalabas pa siya because of the leaky potassium selective channels. Lumalabas pa. Okay? However, however, bakit ko sinabi at a resting state, less negative siya. See? Even though sodium is being pumped out, sodium is being pumped out inside the cell, it becomes negative. If potassium continuously leaks out, it makes the cell inside to be negative. Lalo. Am I right? Lumalabas na si sodium, yung potassium na pumapasok, lumalabas pa. It makes inside the cell to be more negative. Am I right? Yes. But how come this does not happen permanently? Because in the outer segment, the sodium na pump outside is easily pumped inside because of the cyclic GMP gated channels. Because of the presence of the cyclic GMP, the cyclic GMP serves as a splint. Alam mo yung pintuan? You put a splint to make it open. So the cyclic GMP would act as a splint. So the sodium ions outside the cell can easily go inside. So at a resting state, Imagine, you sodium pumapasok at a resting state. So the resting membrane potential is less negative as compared to the other cells. See, in the dark phase, walang stimulus, walang action potential. The cyclic GMP would splint the gate, rendering sodium to be pumped inside. Therefore, pag pumapasok si sodium, less negative you inside the cell. But in the presence of stimulus light the light will remove the spleen tatanggalin na si cyclic gmp so in the presence of light cyclic gmp goes down when cyclic gmp goes down you remove the spleen sodium ions cannot go inside so when sodium ions cannot go inside what happens to the charge inside the cell it becomes more negative and this is the reason why in an action potential inside the cell, it becomes more negative. Therefore, it is a hyperpolarizing potential, hyperpolarizing change because you remove the cyclic GMP. Take note of this one. So again, pa ulit ulit. So the rhodopsin, in the presence of stimulus light, ilaw, okay? This one would produce your G protein called your transducin. The transducin would increase the cyclic GMP phosphodiesterase. So if you increase the cyclic GMP phosphodiesterase, the enzyme, this would cleave. The enzyme would cleave the cyclic GMP. So what happens if cyclic GMP is cleaved? Sinira mo siya. Therefore, you decrease cyclic GMP. If you decrease cyclic GMP, it becomes a 5' prime GMP. So there's increase in 5' prime GMP. If you remove the cyclic GMP, you remove the splint. So if you remove the splint, this gate will close. Sodium cannot enter. So if there's an action potential, sodium cannot enter. Inside the cell, it becomes more negative. So this is what happens when the rods are excited. With the presence of light, the rhodopsin, okay, would undergo chemical change. You produce the G protein transducin to mata us. The transducin would increase the phosphodiesterase. 
and these phosphor diesterase would destroy the cyclic GMP. Therefore, cyclic GMP goes down. Cyclic GMP goes down would increase five prime GMP. And if you decrease the cyclic GMP, you decrease or you remove the splint of the gated sodium channel. If you remove the splint of the sodium gated channel, sodium cannot go inside, leading to a hyperpolarizing change, rendering inside the cell to be more negative. You have to know this by heart because for sure this will be asked. But do you understand kung bakit hyperpolarizing change na siya? Clear? Yes, po. Okay. Now, let's talk about the excitation of the cones. Same process. But instead of rhodopsin, it... <coughs> Excuse me. Instead of rhodopsin, okay, ang tawag sa kanila would be the color or cone pigments, if you can still remember. Because rhodopsin is your visual purple, while your color or cone pigments would be responsible for the excitation of cones, okay? And rhodopsin would be broken down into scotopsin plus retinal, but the color pigments or the cone pigments would be broken down into your photopsins and retinal. So for cones, it would be your color pigments broken down into your photopsins and retinal. Photopsins and retinal. While for the rods, scotopsins or color or visual purple, which would be broken down in the rhodopsin, which is your visual purple, would be broken down into your scotopsin plus the retinal. So again, to, let me write it down. Rhodopsin is made up of your scotopsin plus your retinal. Your color or cone pigments is made up of your photopsins plus retinal. So they share the same retinal. Ang pagkakaiba lang is the scotopsin. Just for nomenclature purposes lang. So excitation of the cones, of course, it will give you color vision. Take note, cones, letter C. Cones, color vision. Clear by mnemonics natin? Cones, C, color vision. We only have three types of color cones. Blue, green, red. Walang purple, magenta, violet, pink, fuchsia, teal, aquamarine, or whatever. We only have the blue, the green, and the red cones. But how come we can say na, ay, itong nakikita natin is violet? Because probably you stimulate, you stimulate something at this wavelength. Okay, so this wavelength will be a combination of the wavelength of a little bit of red, a little bit of ratio of green and the blue giving rise to your violet. So it is the combination of the excitation of the cones that will give you the different shades of colors. Indeed, we say you see violet because the violet cone is stimulated or excited. Voila, it is the ratio. Gano kadaming blue yun na excite, gano kadaming red yun na excite, then you can see purple or violet. You excite some green, you excite some red, so you can see some shades of orange, something like that, okay? So it is based on the excitation of the different colored coats. And again, we only have three, the blue, the green, and the red. Of course, you don't have to memorize this one. Nice to know, Lion. I'm just explaining it. Silumir Rhodopsin. I'm oh, just kidding. Okay, let's talk about light and dark adaptation. Aside from giving you your plain and simple color vision, black and white vision, your rods and cones are very important for light and dark adaptation. Again, I'm pretty sure na nod na kayo ng sine, but since it's pandemic, walang sine mapanood muna dito sa Philippines. No? So when you go inside the movie house, initially it's very dark, it's blurred, Malabo. Tingnan, you cannot even see the floor. Am I right? Mahirap. But after a few seconds to minutes, unti-unti, you can already see who is your seatmate, who is your 
uh, you know, whatever, chaperone or kung sino man nasa harap mo or ganyan, no? Because there's what we call your dark adaptation. So, in the dark, let's look at this graph. Because based on this graph, you should be able to understand some questions in the exam. Light and dark adaptation is made responsible because of the rods and cones. Yan yung primary. The photosensitive cells, which are your rods and cones. Yan talaga pinaka-role nila. A little bit of the pupillary size, I told you earlier, you change in the size of pupils, di ba? In the dark, you increase pupillary size by midriasis, sympathetics. If maliwanag naman, you decrease pupillary size, meiosis, parasympathetics. Neural adaptation, the brain will tell you, oh, madilim na to. Okay, you stimulate more of those cells. But minor lang yan. The most of the adaptations would be because of the photosensitive cells. So now let's talk about the speed and sensitivity. Which one would have a higher speed to adapt? Which one would be more sensitive, pero mas mabagal? I think based on this graph, you should be able to answer. Upon entering the movie house, minutes in the dark, upon entering into the movie house, which one do you think will adapt first? The rods or the cones? Based on the graph. Cones po. Cones, very good. The cones will adapt first. Therefore, the cones would have a higher speed to adapt in the dark. But only up to a certain point. Only up to a certain point. Because up to a certain point, the rods will start to adapt. Mas late sila mag-adapt, but they are more sensitive. Continuously kang nasa dark, mas sensitive sila because they can keep on adapting and adapting and adapting and adapting while yung cones already has have stopped to adapt. Okay? So cones are faster to adapt, but only up to a certain point because the rods are more sensitive and they can adapt for a longer period of time than the cones. Am I clear? Therefore, vitamin A is very important for night vision, for night blindness. Why? Because your vitamin A will give you continuous supply of your retinol. Nalala mo pa ba si 11 trans retinol? Sa vitamin A kanina? It will give you continuous supply so that you will have continuous, continuous supply adaptation in the dark clear so if you have a very poor vitamin a supply in the body you will not have a very efficient dark adaptation if you go to those northern lights hunt in the dark you will have a hard time deciphering because you have a very poor dark adaptation so the value of adaptation is in bright sunlight your rods and cones would uh, have a sensation na, oops, masyado na maliwanag. Medyo bawasan ko na yung stimulation of my rods and cones. So you will have a very bright vision in a broad daylight under the sunlight. But in the dark starlight or moonlit night, your rods should continuously adapt and be excited so you'll have a very good vision. So whether in the dark, whether in the light, there should be a good interplay between the cones and the rods for you to have a very good adaptation. So this is your light and dark adaptation. Okay. Now, can you understand na ano physiology behind that? Physiology of vision is so hard if you just read the book without listening to the lecture, but I'm trying to make it easier for you to understand. Sobrang hirap ng intindihin. Again, I told you that color vision is a tricolor mechanism for you to detect color. And interpretation of color is not because of you can see orange because you stimulate the orange cones. It's because it is an interplay among the different color cones. Like orange is stimulation, sabi dito, no? It's 99 na, 99 na red cone stimulation. 42 daw na green cone, which will give you orange. O, di ba? Ganun pala yun. Yung blue, okay, is purely simulation of the 97 na blue cones. Ganun pala, no? So, ibig sabihin, if I want to see aquamarine, there might be 50 na blue, 50 na green. Ganun pala. And it is like that, actually. But of course, these are all theoretical aspects that you do not have to memorize. 
yan lang yung principle behind that. Okay? So how come you see white light? It is because of the equal stimulation of all the color codes. You stimulate the blue, the green, and the red, then you see a white image. Okay? Color blindness. In the laboratory, you should know what is this called. Ano tawag just a chart na yan? Is this the Ishihara or the American optics? You have to know that. Tinatanong sa practical exam yan every semester, every exam. So, bonus na yan. So, for people with color blindness, those who cannot see the red, they are called the protanope. Ang clue ko dyan, protanope, para matanda nyo, sino ba si deuteranope, protanope, sino ba si tritanope. To help me remember, the red light district, maraming puta. So, they are their protanope. Okay, so protanope. So your green light would be a uh, green light. Your green blindness would be a deuteranope. Your blue blindness would be a tritanope. Patients on chronic intake of your anti-tuberculosis drug, your ethambutol, they have to be screened for red and green color blindness. Okay. Neural retina. Of course, again, the retina, if stimulated, they should need some excitatory neurotransmitter agents. And the major neurotransmitter agent in the neural retina is something excitatory called your glutamate. Okay? If you read the book, there are still other neurotransmitter agents because like in the horizontal cells, the horizontal cells would have inhibitory function. So, there's a GABA. But the main neurotransmitter agent would be your glutamate, excitatory. Remember, I told you that in the retina, especially in the runs and cones, there will be action potential. When I say action potential, this is an all or none. Irregardless, if madaming ilaw, masilaw yung ilaw, weak lang yung light, as long as it reaches the threshold potential, there will be action potential, graded conduction. Ano siya? It is an all or none. Clear? Action potential, all or none. Merong ilaw, as long as you reach a critical fine level, you will stimulate the rods and cones. Am I clear? Yes. But all the other cells here, the bipolar cells, amacrine cells, ganglion cells, they do not make use of action potential. So ano gamit nila? They use electrotonic conduction. I cannot just correct myself. Uh, all the other cells, bipolar cells, amacrine cells, except the ganglion cells. Sorry, I have to correct this one. Except the ganglion cells. It is the ganglion cell that would that would make use of action potential and humor rods and cones. But all the other cells, bipolar cells, horizontal cells, amacrine cells, they make use of electrotonic conduction. Ano ibig sabihin niya? If I say electrotonic conduction, this is not all or none. If yung ilaw, yung stimulus ko is stronger, then I'll have more graded response. Mas na-stimulate yung horizontal cells. Mas na-stimulate yung bipolar cells. Okay? Electrotonic conduction. The only difference lang sa different parts of the body. Because all the different parts of the body cells, all of them would make use of action potential. But in the ganglion cell, the rods and cones, action potential yan, because the ganglion cells, the next step niya would be going to the optic nerve na. And the optic nerve is already the evagination of your prosencephalon. If you can still remember prosencephalon, your forebrain. Remember? Kasi 5, 6, 7, 8, galing sa pons. 3 and 4 from the midbrain. 9, 10, 11, 12, the cranial nerve from your medulla. But your cranial nerve 1 and 2 are derived from your prosencephalon. Prosencephalon is also known as your forebrain. And your prosencephalon would give rise to your telencephalon and diencephalon. Kumusta pala exam ng higher center? Ay, nag-exam na ba kayo? Yes. Ano, diba? ano nasagot niyo ba yung mga questions? Okay naman. Pwede na po. Pwede na, di ba? Kung ano yung mga nasa lecture, you just have to listen. Okay? Sige, let's move on. Now, let's go to the ret neural retina again. Now, remember I told you, you do not have to memorize the cells. I'll just choose what you have to know. 
horizontal cells are very important. Tingnan ninyo, if all the cells here would be stimulated, edi minsan gulong-gulo na yung sweaty na, tapos kanino ba ako magpo-focus? Hilong-hilo na siya. That's why you have the horizontal cells. So if you will stimulate this part lang, ito lang yung part na gusto mo stimulate, dito ka lang nag-shine ng light. Isang part lang yung gusto mo stimulate. The horizontal cells would tell the neighboring cells. So sasabihin na sa neighboring cells, ito lang yung in-excite. Huwag kayong masyadong pakialamera at lahat gustong i-excite. The horizontal cells would inhibit the other areas para you will know, you can localize Saan lang ba ako nag-shine ng light? Anong part lang ba ng retina yung gusto kong stimulate? Because the horizontal cells and the amacrine cells will follow the principle of lateral inhibition. If you stimulate this part, the horizontal cells and the amacrine cells will tell the neighboring cells, okay, mag-stop ka na mag-fire. Hindi ikaw ang in-stimulate. So you have to be inhibited. Lalabas ko ng gaba para medyo patahimikin ka, para i-inhibit ka. Kasi ito lang yung gusto kong to be stimulated. Do you follow? So what are the cells that can do lateral inhibition? Primarily horizontal cells. A little bit of your amacrine cells. So again, can you still remember the depolarizing and the hyperpolarizing bipolar cells? Again, so hindi ko na siya masyado i-discuss. The amacrine cells can perform lateral inhibition. Hindi ko na to itatanong sa exam, so you don't have to worry. And on and off signaling. What do I mean by on and off signaling? The amacrine cells will tell you, pag nasa room ka, you turn the lights off, turn the lights on, you are already alert na ay nag-on, off, on, off your light because of the presence of amacrine cells. You don't have to know this one. Hindi ko yan usually tinatanong na. The ganglion cells on the optic nerve fibers are very important. I told you that the ganglion cells, sila yung nag-transfer ng signal to the optic nerve to the brain. So if you have 1.6 ganglion cells, konti, but I have 1 million rods, 3 million cones, meaning to say one ganglion cell can have more than one rods or one cone. So if you ratio niya, no, mas malaki, ibig sabihin, one ganglion cell, 100 the rods and cones as compared to one ganglion cell three cones which would have a more sensitive or sino yung mas maganda yung visual acuity the higher ratio distribution or the smaller ratio distribution the smaller ratio distribution you'll have a sharper visual acuity kasi one ganglion cell mas kukunting photoreceptors so mas guided siya Mas, mas maganda yung vision mo, okay? So the lower is the ratio of your ganglion cell to your photoreceptor, the better is your vision. And remember, the area of the retina with the best vision acuity is the fovea centralis. Why? Because in the fovea centralis, there is an absence of the rods. You only have cones. So whether in the dark, whether in the light, you'll be able to see color vision, sharp vision. Because in the visual acuity in the fovea centralis is very high, very sharp. Because of the high amount of cones in the fovea centralis, actually, wala nga siyang rods. It's only the presence of cones. And the cones in the fovea centralis are more slender, mas payat. So, ibig sabihin, mas kasha sila sa fovea centralis. As compared kung mataba sila, at isang cone sa sa fovea centralis. Pangit. So you need more cones. So mas payat, mas mahaba, mas slender. Kaya mas madami sila sa fovea centralis. Clear? Good. Now, let's go to the ganglion cell. Before going to the optic nerve, let's talk about the ganglion cell. You have three types of your ganglion cell. The W, X, and the Y. The W... X, and the Y. W cells would make up of 40% of your ganglion cell, mabagal, crude rod vision. So when I say crude rod vision, is this black and white or colored vision? Rods. Black and white. Very good. This is a black and white. W. <coughs> w. Y. <coughs> this is not... <coughs> 
W, white. So black and white, black vision, pangit, crude. X cells, X ganglion cell, siya yung pinakamadami, 55%, fine visual image, cone vision. So when I say cone vision, is this color or black and white? Color. Color, cone, letter C, color. So X cells for your color vision. W, W, B and W, black and white. Clear? Sino pinakamadami? X cells. Y cells are the largest. They are the fastest. They can detect movement. Gumagalaw na light, strobe lights, or change in intensity. Ano, blinking lights, okay? Masilaw, nawala. Masilaw, nawala. Okay? Clear? W, X, and Y. You will encounter them again later when you talk about the neurophysiology pag nasa brain na tayo, in the visual cortex. Now, this is the last part of the physiology of vision, the visual pathway. That's a brain na tayo. Kanina, optics of vision. That's a cornea, that's a vitreous humor, that's a lens. Tapos, we talk about glaucoma, that's a acreous humor, vitreous humor. We've talked about the uh, neural retina, the ganglion cell, the WXY. Now, from the ganglion cell, pupunta na siya sa optic nerve. Now, the visual pathway has a new and the old pathway. The old pathway is more pronounced in primates, monkeys, or other lower forms of animals. Because the old visual pathway would make use of a suprachiasmatic nucleus. The suprachiasmatic nucleus is very important for circadian rhythm. What is circadian rhythm? I can see it's daylight, gising ako. Wala ko nakikita ng sunlight, gabi, patutulog ako. The circadian rhythm, the day and night. That's why some, well, some patients or some persons, normal happening naman to, some persons living in the high Arctic area, like in higher Alaska, in the summertime, medyo mess up yung kanilang sleeping pattern. Because a circadian rhythm, actually, yeah, when I was there just uh, July, my circadian rhythm would be messed up. Why? Because in Barrow, like that, those places, your circadian rhythm is messed up because in summer, you have 24 hours of daylight. So if you have 24 hours of daylight, you cannot see any darkness. So maguguluhan ka. So your suprachiasmatic nucleus would be messed up until you get yourself to be get used to it. So that's the importance of that suprachiasmatic nucleus to help you no, daylight ba to? Gising ako dapat o night time na dapat ako matutulog na. So you will have a hard time sleeping, you will have a hard time waking up. Next, we do the pretectal nuclei. Pretectal nuclei is found in the midbrain. It is important for the light reflex, which we'll be discussing later. If the pretectal nuclei is in the midbrain, and the midbrain is made, it's formed from your mesencephalon, your suprachiasmatic nucleus is formed from what brain vesicle? Kung hypothalamus siya. If you can still recall. Hypothalamus is derived from blank. Kasi pretectal nuclei, midbrain. Alam ko si midbrain siya si mesencephalon. Pag suprachiasmatic nucleus, hypothalamus. Sino siya? Prosen, mesen, rhomben. Prosen do. Very good. Your prosencephalon. Ang galing-galing natatandaan pa. Prosencephalon. Particularly, telencephalon or diencephalon? Diencephalon. Very good. Because your diencephalon would give rest to your hypothalamus and your thalamus. Telencephalon, the basal ganglia and the cerebral cortex. Very good. You still remember. Superior colliculi for rapid directional movement or visual fixation. You fixate on an object. You're doing archery. You want to fixate on an object. Bakit pronounce siya sa mga lower form of animals in hunting? If uh, you are a cheetah, parang sa Wonder Woman, no? in 1985, may cheetah. <laughs> when I watched it two nights ago. 
if an animal is going to hunt, they have to fixate their vision by using their superior collicular. They have to fixate their vision on their target, on their prey. Para mas na rapid directional movement, mas kaya their prey is moving or running around. They can fixate their gaze on the prey. Kaya kaya ng kaya nilang habulin and huliin. That's why the old visual pathway is very, very important for animals, the lower forms of animals. Ventral, lateral, geniculate nucleus for behavior and thalamus because in the new pathway, you will encounter the lateral geniculate nucleus, but it is a dorsal, lateral geniculate, D-L-G-N, dorsal, lateral geniculate nucleus for the new visual pathway. Now, let's try to draw. Actually, nakadraw na siya. So if this is the left eye, this is the right eye, and this is the visual field. When I say visual field, yan yung nakikita ko. Mm -hmm. Ay, if this is a visual field, yung nakikita ko. So this is my left visual field of my left eye, right visual field. For my left eye, I have the temporal, that's a side. Right eye, I have the temporal visual field. I have my nasal visual field of the right eye, nasal visual field of the left eye. In the optic nerve, you also have the nasal part and the temporal part. The nasal part on the same side, upunta din the same side, at the level of the optic chiasm, it would decussate to the opposite. Nasal side would decussate to the opposite. So same side, just optic nerve, decussate to the opposite side. Where does it decussate? So optic chiasm. The temporal side, still on the same side, does not decussate. Temporal side on the same does not decussate. So temporal is 100% ipsilateral same side while the nasal part of the optic nerve would be on the same side but would decussate to the opposite therefore therefore you have to know the different parts of the visual pathway and what kind of blindness will you have normally the nasal part of the optic nerve will let you perceive the temporal field of gaze the left. Bakit? Sabi ko nga, di ba, kung nasa lateral side, nasa left, proper projection sa retina on the right. There's inversion of image. So the temporal visual field is perceived on the nasal side of the retina to the nasal side of the optic nerve. Therefore, if I'll cut this part, puputulin ko to, ano ang hindi ko nakikita? You have to trace. If pinutol ko yung optic nerve of the left eye, intact ba tong temporal part? Would this be intact? No, kasi kinap mo siya. So temporal, sira. Would the nasal part be intact? Hindi na rin po. Hindi na rin. What kind of blindness will you have? Sinira mo to, sinira mo rin to. Can you see this? Sira to eh. Can you see this? Hindi na po. No. So, shade out. Can you see this? Ito, sira to eh. Would you be able to see this? Hindi na rin po. No. So, if you destroy the optic nerve, Ipsilateral optic nerve will have ipsilateral monoocular blindness. Blindness of the left eye. Clear? Good. If I have a pituitary tumor, a tumor in the optic chiasm, I destroy the optic chiasm. My next question is, Alam mo, teka na nga, bakit parang hindi ko siya ma-change yung color ng pen? Oh, teka na nga. Pwede nga ba ganyan? Anyway, hindi ko siya ma-change, pero kaya mo na. The optic chasm. Teka na. Ay, sorry.
the optic chasm, would the nasal side of the optic nerve be intact? In a book. Hindi na, very good, kasi pinutol mo na siya. Would this temporal field ng optic nerve intact? Intact pa rin po. Yes, very sir. good, very good. The right eye, the temporal field intact or not? Intact. Intact, very good. So you just destroy the nasal side of the optic nerve of both the left and the right. My next question is, if you destroy this one, Can you see this part? Hindi na po. Hindi na. This is spared. So can you see this? Spared tong temporal. Can you see this part? Yes po. Yes, very good. How about sa left eye? Spared tong temporal part. Can you see the nasal field? So maging ganda yung visual field niya. Sabi mo, on the right eye, the temporal, this one is intact. So you can still see this one. But the nasal side is destroyed. So you cannot see this. How about the left eye? Your nasal nasira na. Can you see this part? Can you see this part? Temporal is intact. Yes, pa. Yes. You, you cannot see both temporal sides. So this is by temporal hemi anopsia. The long temples. Clear? Good. Yes. This good. This part here is optic truck. If we destroy the optic truck, we destroy that temporal side. If we destroy the temporal side, can you see this one? Can you see this one? Imagine mo. Visual field though. Optic truck, pinutol mo siya. Can you see this one, the temporal? Can you see this one? Ito, pinutol mo ta. Oh. Can you see this one? No. Yeah, I'll draw it again for you. Can you see this one? No. Blind shot. Can you see this one? Yes or no? Yes. 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 Kasi dito kung mo sinira, eh saan ba nagagaling to? It comes from the opposite eye. So this is intact. Can you see this one? Yes. Yes. Can you see this one? No. Why? Because from this part. So, isang temporal ang hindi nakakakita, isang nasal ang hindi nakikita. Ano tawag mo dyan? Contralateral homonymous hemianopia. Very good. Okay? Contralateral homonymous hemianopsia. Okay? Clear? You have to know that. Ano kapag sa visual cortex? Same lang. Same lang pag sa visual cortex. You still have the same pattern of blindness. Very clear yan, na. Sige. Now, let's go to the visual pathway. Ayan na. Nasa optic nerve na siya. Nasa optic chiasm. Nasa optic tract. Lahat siya visual pathway. And in the visual pathway, in the dorsal, lateral, geniculate, nucleus, we have the two types of cells because in the dorsal, lateral, geniculate nucleus, we have six layers now. The first two layers is made up of the magnocellular. Layers three to six is the parvocellular. Magnocellular would make use of large neurons. Ano may pinakamalaking ganglion cell? The Y. So this makes use of the Y. Ano pa yung ginagamit niya? The W. Y and W. Why? Because you have the black and white vision. Poor accuracy. Siyempre, crude, rad vision, black and white. So, magnocellular, black and white, X and black and white, W and Y cells, poor accuracy. As compared to parvocellular, X ganglion cell, 
color vision, high accuracy. Clear? Clear, Jan? Yes, Paul. Say the last chassis X. So, si X at the bottom. X chassis, ano? Color vision, high accuracy. Last part, the visual cortex. The visual cortex is the last part of the visual pathway. Siya yung magsasabi sa'yo kung ano yung nakikita mo at may nakikita ka nga ba? Because if you have a destruction or stroke or lesion in the primary visual cortex, because the visual cortex is located in the occipital lobe, particularly the calcarine fissure. The calcarine fissure. The calcarine fissure is made up of your primary visual cortex or your Broadman area 17. The primary visual cortex is also known as the striate cortex. Because of the striations in its gross section. Primary visual cortex, Broadman era 17 or striate cortex. Broadman areas 18, 19 will be your secondary visual cortex. Secondary visual cortex to tell you what is the shape, what is the color, what is the consistent, uh, consistency, what is the, um, tawag dito, kung ano itsura, 3D, is it fat, big, stout, plump, or whatever. Therefore, if you have a destroyed primary visual cortex, you cannot see the object. But if you have an intact primary visual cortex, but you have a destroyed secondary visual cortex, you can see the object, but you do not even know what the object is. Clear? You can only know what that object is if you will touch the object. Why? Because sense of touch is not governed by visual cortex. It is governed by Broadman area blank. Stereognosis. Three, one, two. Okay? Post central gyrus. Okay, if you are going to check your post central gyrus, if you ask your patient to touch familiar objects, you have to ask them to close their eyes. Para walang visual cues from the visual cortex. Kasi if hindi ako nakakaramdam, pero nakikita ko siya, then pwede kong dayain. So you have to close your eyes and palpate. But for patients with primary visual cortex, open mo yung mata, pero sila yung primary visual cortex, hindi ko alam ko ano nakikita ko. But if you will ask me to touch and palpate that object, ay alam ko ball pen to, pineapple to, because I can feel it. Clear? Okay, the visual cortex again has six layers. Diba ang complicated? Diba ma, dorsal, lateral, and genically body may, may, Layer 1 to 6. Visual cortex may 1 to 6. Pero hindi ko nakaililituhin. The visual cortex would have 6 layers. Whether, whether you are using the parvocellular pathway or the magnocellular pathway, they will just terminate at level 4. Period. Yun lang alamin nyo. Period. Level 4. The parvocellular pathway would make use of the uh, layer number four and the parvocellular pathway would mediate color vision because of the X ganglion cell. Very accurate color vision. The magnocellular pathway, layer four, Y ganglion for the black and white vision. Pag Y ganglion, black and white vision, so meron ni siyang W cells of the ganglion. So W, Y, so Y kasi is the fastest, is the largest. W is the black and white vision. So magnocellular is W and Y, fastest, black and white vision, layer four of the cortex. Parvocellular, layer four of the cortex, X ganglion cell, very accurate, color vision. Clear? Visual field, you are able to see what you are seeing, very broad in visual field mode, because you have both eyes open, you have the temporal, Hello? you have the nasal, okay? You have the temporal and the nasal. 
but normally, normally, okay, on visual field natin, we have one what we call the um, blind spot. Physiologic yan, yung blind spot. Why? Because the blind spot is the area in the retina kung saan pumapasok yung optic nerve, okay? So that area is what we call the blind spot. So where can you find the physiologic blind spot? It is found at the 15 degree lateral to the field of gaze. 15 degrees to the lateral field of gaze. In the laboratory part, you will be able to appreciate this one. You will be able to appreciate this one. The 15 degree lateral field of gaze is your physiologic blind spot, okay? And blind spots are what we call scotoma. Because the 15 degree lateral field of gaze is normal, that's physiologic. But abnormal blind spots are called scotoma, scotomata, by plural. And they can because, be because of allergy, glaucoma, toxins, tobacco use, or retinitis pigmentosa. Nice to know lang yan, but you have to know where is a physiologic blind spot. 15 degree lateral to the field of gaze. May activity kayo dyan sa laboratory. This one, we have discussed this one. And you have to know what we have discussed earlier. Mas hindi mo naintindihin to. If you were able to understand the picture that we had earlier, you cut it the optic nerve, optic chiasm, optic tract, visual cortex, you should know this. Pero itong yung mga may quadrantinopsia, huwag niyo na alamin to. Para, kasi ayoko malito-lito kayo. Clear? Now, let's go to the eye movement. The extraocular muscles are able to move your eye to the up, down, left, right, upward lateral, downward medial, etc. because of the cranial nerves. Three, four, six. Oculomotor, trochlear, abducens. Cranial nerve six would innervate what muscle? Lateral very good. Cranial nerve 4 would innervate what muscle? Superior oblique. Superior oblique. All the rest would be cranial nerve 3. Now, what is reciprocal innervation? Your brain will tell you, I gusto ko tumingin sa right. If you will look to your right, so everybody look to your right. What muscle is, in, is excited? Pag you are looking to your right, so right eye, what muscle is excited? Tingin sa right. Anong muscle yung na, na re recruit? Lateral. Very good. Your lateral rectus. How about the right eye? Anong muscle yung na recruit? Sa left eye, anong muscle? Medial Very good, the medial rectus. So what can you note or what can you notice in looking to the right? There is reciprocal innervation. Your brain will tell your right eye, contract the lateral rectus of the right eye while you relax the medial rectus of the right eye. On the left eye, you contract your medial rectus while you relax the lateral rectus. So there's reciprocal innervation. And the reciprocal innervation is because of the presence of the medial longitudinal fasciculus, the MLF, the medial longitudinal fasciculus. Because the medial longitudinal fasciculus, okay, would be able to tell you if you contract this muscle on this particular eye, the opposite muscle should be relaxed. Otherwise, if you look to the right, kung walang medial longitudinal fasciculus, kung kinontract mo lateral rectus, Plus, yung medial rectus, gusto din mag-contact. So, saan ka natitingin? Hindi mo na alam kung saan ka titingin. Okay? So, if you contract the right lateral rectus, plus itong si left eye, si lateral rectus, gusto din mag-contract. And it, nakatingin ka na sa both right and left. So, ano ka na? Naging ano ka na? Naging bird ka na. Isang eye looking at the right, isang eye looking at the left. So, hindi naman pwede. No? So, there has to be reciprocal innervation made possible because of the medial longitudinal fasciculus. Do I make myself clear? Yes, <clears throat> now, eye fixation. I told you eye fixation is very important because of the presence of the superior colliculi. In the laboratory part, you will see this optokinetic drum. 
and you will see the saccadic eye movement. You should be able to explain in the conference how come you have the saccadic eye movement. Bakit may mga fixation? What is the importance? I've already told you what importance of fixation. To fix your gaze on your target, on your prey. Ano pa? You will discuss that in your laboratory part. Fusion of images. Stereopsis. Okay? Depth perception. Because there's fusion. What I can see in my right eye, yan din makikita ko sa left. Plus, ang hindi ko nakikita sa left is compensated by the right. So, the left side of that object is seen better with my right eye because of the fusion of image. So if there's fusion of image of my left eye and right eye, there's fusion. Okay, so you will have depth perception. Mas maganda yung depth perception mo. Monoocular vision or one eye vision, you cannot perceive depth. That's why in watching 3D movies, you need stereopsis or two eyes wide open. Strabismus, yung mga nadudulin-dulin, yung isa nakatingin sa taas, yung isa nakatingin sa baba, you will have a difficulty in fusing your image. You will have poor depth perception. Okay? We're almost done. Autonomic nervous system would give you accommodation if parasympathetics. And I told you, in autonomic nervous system, the parasympathetic and the sympathetics would be very important. Sympathetics would give you dilation of the pupils because in dim light, in very dark, sympathetics would be stimulated. The central neuron would sign up with your superior cervical ganglion. I told you, remember, in autonomics, the upper cervical uh, spinal nerve, C1 to C7, would have the sympathetic ganglion. The superior cervical ganglion of the sympathetic chain would be stimulated would release norepinephrine to contract the radial muscles to cause pupillary dilation. Bright light, you shine the light, you would stimulate the edinger westfall nucleus. The edinger westfall nucleus is located in the tectum of the midbrain. And you will find here the center of the pupillary light reflex. It will now stimulate the ciliary ganglion. Ciliary ganglion, once stimulated, would stimulate the parasympathetic effect of the eye, leading to contraction of the circular muscles, leading to pupillary constriction. So sympathetic is dilation or midriasis. Parasympathetic is constriction or meiosis. Let's go to the pupillary light reflex. Pupillary light reflex is a parasympathetic effect because the stimulus is light. The effect is constriction of the pupil. When we talk about reflex, we should have an afferent limb or the sensory limb and an efferent limb, which is the motor limb. So meron kang dapat stimulus, sensory nerve, center, motor nerve, and effector organ. So what is the effector organ ng light reflex? Ano mo design action mo? Pupillary constriction. So what is the effector organ? What will bring about pupillary constriction? The circular muscles of the eye, right? It will bring about pupillary constriction. So you shine a light on the right eye. Therefore, stimulus, sensory nerve. You stimulate the optic nerve. Stimulate the optic nerve. And the stimulates optic nerve. But remember, the optic nerve goes on the same side and goes to the opposite side. So you stimulate both the right and the left pretectal nucleus. So both pretectal nuclei of the right and the left would be stimulated. It would now send impulse to the edinger westphal send impulse to the cranial nerve 3. The cranial nerve 3 on both the right and the left would serve as an efferent limb of the pupillary light reflex. That's why if you shine the light in one eye, you'll have constriction of the pupils in both eyes because the optic nerve would send stimulus to the ipsilateral 
tectum and also the contralateral tectum, which would stimulate both uh, the intravestival nucleus of the right and the left, leading to constriction of both the right and the left eye. Do I make myself clear? Yes. Good. So if I will shine the light on my left eye, both the left and the right will constrict same principle, optic nerve of the left eye to the same side, optic nerve of the left eye to the opposite side, you stimulate both edinger vestal nucleus in the tectum, you stimulate both cranial nerve three leading to constriction. When you shine the light on the right eye and you observe the constriction of the right eye, this is your direct light reflex, direct light reflex. If you shine the light on the right eye, but you are observing the opposite eye, this is your consensual light reflex. Direct is kung saan ka nag-shine ng light, dun mo tinitingnan, direct. If you're observing the other eye, it is your consensual light reflex. Clear? Good. Gusto mo pang pahirapan pa natin? No, na hindi ko naman kayo pa pahirapan. Kasi I will ask you, sino mga may sira? May right optic nerve? left oculomotor. Hindi ko na kaya masyadong papahirapan. Because you will have that in your neurology naman. Last slide. Autonomic nervous system constriction. Arjun Robertson pupil is a problem of the central nervous system because of syphilis. The patient will respond to light or not. Will the patient respond to light or not? No. The patient will not respond to light. Hindi siya mag-respond, hindi siya mag-constrict. But the patient will constrict only to accommodation. Because I told you, in accommodation, you bring that object closer, the pupils will constrict. Normally, the edinger vestal nucleus would, would uh, continuously fire inhibitory neurotransmitter agents, except if may stimulus lang. But in this case, for our Jill Robertson pupil, patients with syphilis, they will not, they will not constrict. The pupils will not constrict with light stimulus, but they will only constrict with accommodation. So they are what we call your prostitute's eye. Pag inilawan mo, hindi yan mag-respond. Pag nilapitan mo, mag-respond na. Our Jill Robertson pupil. Second is a Horner syndrome. This is the affected part. Ptosis, meiosis, no, ptosis, kirat, meiosis, constricted, and anhydrosis, walang pawis. Now, I will ask you, Horner syndrome is a sympathetic problem. You have a problem in the sympathetics. Is meiosis expected? Yes. yes. You destroy the sympathetic chain. You cannot dilate. So you have constriction of the pupil. Clear? Ptosis. The muscles that would elevate your eye would have a parasympathetic action, but it is destroyed. Wala kang sympathetic, so you have ptosis. Bagsak yung levator palpebrae. Bakit anhydrosis? On the ipsilateral side, kung saan affected, mapula. You will have no sympathetic. Sympathetic will give you vasoconstriction. Constriction of blood vessels. But wala kang sympathetic, so it is very flush, mapula, because of parasympathetic effect. Bakit anhydrosis? Bakit walang pawis? Bakit very dry? Is sweating a sympathetic effect? Yes, but... Yes, why? Uh, ano siya? Sympathetic adrenergic, sympathetic cholinergic. Very good. Since you destroy the sympathetic chain, you also destroy the sympathetic cholinergic autonomic fibers. Therefore, you destroy the sympathetic cholinergic, no innervation to the effector organ of the sweat glands, you will not sweat on that side. So in physiology, it is very important that you should always have a background, always. You should not remember all the basics. Tiamod, pati dito, pati higher center, we discuss autonomic nervous system. So it's very important. Physiology is a hand-in-hand, -hand, very, very important subject that you have to decipher. That's why when I do lectures, I want it to be very 
picture oriented and I want it to be like a storytelling thing para tas naiintindihan ninyo. So after this lecture, if you read the book, you will be able to understand further. Because you have to read the book because you need that talaga for the exam in laboratory. But what you have learned in the lecture, kung naiintindihan ninyo, you'll almost perfect the exam. Dapat. Okay? I think that's my last slide. This picture was taken five years ago pa, nung mahaba pa yung hair ko, before I started to teach. Okay? So I hope you learned something. 